just say amen? Come on, let your say amen again. Come on, give God a hand. Praise the Lord. That was alright for me. Let's give the Lord a hand. But for you it is 
saved. Beware of dogs. Mm. I think I can see that again. Beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the circumcision. For we are the circumcisions which wish of God in the Spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Verse 13. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of Christ Jesus. You may be seated. My brothers and my sisters, Paul writes to this Philippian church. And as he writes to this Philippian church in dealing with pressing toward the mark, there are going to come some things in your life that will try to stop you from pressing. There are some things that are going to arrive in your life that's going to try to deter you from making it to where God will have you to be. But regardless of what comes up in your life, regardless of who tries to do what to you, you got to keep on pressing. Uh, there's a joy, there's a blessing in the press. And, and if you want to bless it, you got to learn how to press the Lord, what people say, what people think, what people do. You got to keep on pressing for the place that God is trying to get you in. I had learned sometimes your attitude will determine your attitude. And I just know sometimes I have a bad attitude and, and, and God is working on me with God working on some of y'all But there are some things in my life that I have to learn how to cook. Not always that the, the people know that there's certain things that will push your button, they will try to push your button to get you to act out of character. But you got to learn how to say, okay, devil, I recognize your device. I'm not going to let you get to me because guess what? The battle is not mine. It belongs to God. And I don't have to react to everything that you have. Paul, oh. as he writes this letter to the Philippian church, he says, finally, my brother, rejoice in the Lord. He said, I like to say thank you. To me, indeed, it's not grievous, but for you, it is. It is safe. In other words, I, I got to keep on touching on the same thing so that you can get it. I, I got to keep on writing this because, not because I'm grieving, but I'm writing this so that you can say, I want you to get what God is trying to tell you all. He said, Beware of God. Now, there was a preacher by the name of B.M. Smith uh, that came up with a popular sermon, Watch the Dogs. And when he preached this sermon, he told the people in this sermon there's a whole lot of dogs in church. You got some chihuahuas in church. You have some hound dogs in church as well as some um, pit bulls in church. The Toronto are always bald, always happy, but ain't gonna do nothing. They're like some folks in the church. They're always running their mouths, always talking, but ain't gonna do anything, ain't gonna praise and worship God. They need to hound or always tell other folk what they should do. But they ain't going to do nothing themselves. Then you got those pit bulls. The pit bulls are the ones who try to intimidate other folks not to do because they don't want to do. And people who are intimidated will listen to them rather than listen to God. He 
Did you watch? The Lord. Now Paul here, when he talks, calls the Philippian people, calls them dogs, they are the most shameless person in the church. They call themselves Christians on a Sunday, but live any kind of way through the week. He calls them dogs. He said, but let me understand to you, tell you something, a real Christian, a true people of God, they are those who wish to God in spirit, they wish to God and prompt directly and able by the Holy Spirit. And you can tell we're a Christian. Not only that, but a real Christian also rejoice in Christ. They boast and take pride in Him and not themselves. Yeah. yeah. And thirdly, they have a confidence in the flesh, but in God. Oh, I trust not in my flesh because your flesh will let you down. The flesh will lead you in the wrong direction. You got to learn how to tell the Lord, okay, Lord, I'm your child. You are the Father, and I am the clay. Paul lets us know this morning that before he met Christ, all of the credentials that he had got, he lost it unto Christ because it meant him nothing. All of those materialistic things that he lost, it was well because he gained something in Christ. Then he says here in verse 13, he said, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. Which means, I have an idea. In other words, what he's saying to me was, I'm telling you all what you're not doing, but guess what? I'm not perfect either. And since I know that I'm not perfect and I'm not right, well, one thing I do is forget those things which are behind. And I press toward the more of the matter of fact, you got to forget about what folks think about you. You got to forget about what people are saying. You got to forget about your past. Because whatever in your past is your past. And don't let folks hold you to your past. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. He says, but one thing I do, when I'm honest with you, he says, I press toward the mark. But I cannot, that's my pressing. I understand there's going to be some lot of things that are coming in my life. There will be some people that really don't mean me no good. That smile in your face. And then you have an eye in your back. One thing I learned about church folks. Church folks will smile in your face. But then you get on the phone and talk about you like a dog. I call them fake Christians. Because a real Christian, they won't judge or talk about you. But rather, they'll pray for you. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing to me how church folks can get up and sing a song. But then, after they sing, they want to talk about somebody else. It's if the Lord is not dealing with that person. Yeah. But I come to the conclusion that I made up in my mind. Yeah. Come hell or high water. Yeah. I can't live for nobody else. Yeah. I can only live for Junior. Yeah. Yeah. And I made up in my mind yeah. that I'm going to press toward the mark of
the city of God's attention. It's in your rejoicing, it's in your praise, it's in your wisdom that you get God's attention. That when you ain't got nothing, when you can't turn to nobody, yeah. when you can't depend on nobody, you can always depend on oh God.
He, he knows, he knows, he knows the beginning, the ending from the beginning. And the beginning from the end. Oh, Lord, have mercy. He can beat you right in the middle. All right. But you gotta trust him. You gotta trust him. You gotta have confidence in him. If you trust him, lift a man. Say, so, Lord, I trust, I trust you, you to do this for me.
grateful. Yeah. And so thankful yeah. for God's grace. Yeah. Oh, Lord. And I'm very faithful. Yeah. I didn't deserve it, but he gave it to me.
They tell you to do, do that stuff for a reason. Amen. Amen. And sometimes you prolong your illness by being hearted. Amen. God bless you. And uh, God keep it. They don't have to tell me not to have I went over that stage with you, you don't think what, once or twice? Three times? That's enough for me. I ain't climbing these steps no more. All right. Amen. God bless you. All right. I thank God for our visitors who come to share with us today. Amen. Pray that something will be said that will help you in this walk of life. Y'all, it's getting crazy. Yes, it is. It's getting crazy. Amen, amen, amen. And the reason is, folks have walked away from God. Yeah. Folks have walked away from God. Mm -hmm. Amen. They walked away with Teddy Pettigrew and all these other folks who died and still did. All right now. All right. And still with Jesus who died and now he's alive. Yes, and he lives forevermore. How yes, many of us know this? Yes. Amen. Come on, come on, y'all. Come on, we're going to keep you all day. Amen. Will the choir please stand and watch around at the table, please?